just a massive tornado here, and it is getting bigger by the minute. We need to look into this, but you have to have the world record of chasing and seeing more tornadoes on the planet than any other pilot in the world. In his nearly 40-year career as a helicopter pilot, Jim Gardner has gone from chasing O.J. Simpson down a Los Angeles highway. 55 miles an hour. I think at one point we had 13 helicopters following him down. To chasing some of the biggest, baddest, record-setting storms Oklahoma in the world have ever seen from the air. When you look back at all those big chases, what just some of the things that, that you look back and go, what in the world just kind of stand out in your mind? Well, the one in 2003 was, that was the first time a tornado was filmed from a helicopter at night anywhere in the world because we were able to get it when it crossed a frontier city and there was a big power flash. Like a lot of people, the only question I get, well, how, how do you know how close you get? And I said, you just keep moving in until Mother Nature starts bouncing you around real hard and you go, okay, that's about the line right there. But there was one time. And I thought the storm was far enough up from me and so I made a turn and I got behind it and bam, I was in it. That thing went dead silent. So I'm being pushed down to the ground, you know, yeah. and I'm like, this may be it. I was just trying to push it forward, probably about 100 to 50 feet above the ground. It, it caught and I flew out and we were like right along the ground. You know, the anniversary is coming up, our 10 year for the, uh, the May 19th, May 20th, May 31st. You chased all three of those days. What are some of the things that that stand out that you remember. It is an emotional thing. And I think one time I had to break away from when I was doing reports on that school because I knew what happened. Tornado's gone, you come back, and um, it looks like May 3rd again, right? right. Not as wide, right. not as long, but still the right. same. <clears throat> so really, May 3rd, 1999 changed it for me because I really thought this thing was kind of like a big competition. Whoever gets the first tornado wins. After I saw the destruction that that thing laid down through more and just I mean it hit me then that what we do actually saves lives in 2000 Jim won pilot of the year for his coverage of that terrible day and so <clears throat> at that point David my career could end you know the biggest award ever but the biggest of satisfaction you will ever get is knowing that you saved somebody's life and if what we do saves lives, then I'll do it till I can't do it no more. Jim Gardner, Point Live from Bob Mills. Scotty, it's night back to you. This year, we also remember the 10-year anniversary of a deadly three days in May of 2013. Our Jet Castles is taking a look back. May 2013 was one of the most seismic and memorable tornado seasons on record. 82 tornadoes occurred that year. 59 of those happened the last 12 days of May. These were the three biggest days. May 19th started off the buzzsaw pattern when extreme weather conditions fueled two sizable tornadoes. Edmund, Luther, and then Kearney were hit late afternoon, maxing out as an EF-3. A larger and more violent tornado struck the Shawnee area, creating EF-4 damage with two fatalities. May 20th, this is the day remembered for the savage EF-5 tornado that formed while kids were just ending school, with even more explosive weather conditions than the day before. This contributed to the lone but powerful cataclysm that took the path similar to its twin of May 3rd, 1999. 24 people died that day, including seven at Plaza Towers Elementary. At least 70 children between Plaza Towers and Briarwood were treated for injuries, and the scars of that horrific event still impact lives today. May 2013 ended off with its biggest event, as in biggest ever in my career, the most chaotic and extreme conditions I've ever seen generated the largest tornado on record, 2.6 miles wide. This was a significant threat as it was moving toward the metro, but weakened as it moved in. This tornado will be one of great lore. EF3 damage was recorded, but Doppler radar nearby showed EF5 winds well over 200 miles per hour. Eight motorists lost their lives due to tornadic winds, but 13 died from flash flooding as the storm weakened over the metro. Those three days produced more EF3, EF4, EF5 sized tornadoes in the smallest area over the shortest period of time in Oklahoma weather history. Moore and El Reno still are the last EF5s to hit the country. Up next, Val and Amy Castor on the big screen will show you how they helped film the new movie, Supercell. Great stuff.